Hi, it's Mrs. Moss here, and today we're going to move on from minerals and start talking about the rocks that are created from the minerals we've been talking about. We're going to start with igneous rocks. Igneous rocks that gets its name from the Latin word ignis, which means fire, and it's named that way because these rocks originate from molten lava and magma. Igneous rocks form directly from the solidification of liquid molten rock, which is known as magma or lava, and it turns into solid rock. Now the difference between magma and lava, for those of you who don't know, is uh, magma is under the ground. It's the lava that's under the ground. When it comes out of the earth as in volcanic eruptions, we call it then lava. So it's the same material, it's just one's under the ground and one's out of the ground. Crystallization is a process that occurs when molten lava or magma cools and forms a solid rock that's composed of intergrown mineral crystals. This is a picture of biotite mica and it, um, potassium feldspar and quartz. These are the minerals that we've actually learned about the other day. Now these minerals make up this igneous rock. You can see they're known as crystals in here. You can see the black and white specks. That's what we refer to as the crystals. Okay, and we're going to be talking a lot more about that in the next slide. Here's a picture of it up close, microscopic view and we have the different shapes. These are the different interlocking crystals that create this beautiful igneous rock. So how do we classify igneous rocks? Well, there are two characteristics that we use to classify the rocks, and that will be texture, which is the size of the mineral crystals, and the mineral composition. And we're gonna look at that a little bit more closely in the next few slides. So let's talk about texture. We said that texture is the size of the mineral crystals. And if you look at these two pictures on either side, some have obvious black and white specks, and other looks more of this, like all the same color. Well, the one that's all the same color, this tan color, we would say that that has fine to small crystals because they're so small, they almost the color almost blends together. Whereas on the right hand side, we see that same picture that I showed you before with the larger crystals, the biotite mica, the potassium feldspar, that's really obviously there as black and white pieces. So those are known to have a coarse or a large uh, crystal. Now, the size of the mineral crystal will depend upon the rate at which the magma or lava will cool. Slow cooling gives us those coarse or large crystals that we see up in the top right corner. Fast cooling gives us fine or small crystals that we see in this left hand picture. So the environment of formation is very important. Rates of cooling depend upon where the rock solidifies, where the lava solidifies. We know that's what's known as the environment of formation. Okay, so the rocks that are, the lava that's hardened out um, in the ground is intrusive. It forms inside the earth. And notice we blacken the words in and in from those two words so you can link it in your mind and remember it a little bit easier. Intrusive rocks have, is when the lava forms and hardens inside the earth, well the magma. And it forms when um, it cools slowly so that it has time to form these large crystals. And here's a picture of large crystals. Uh, this had to have been formed under the ground as magma hardening because we can see those large crystals. Here's that picture again. Here's another picture of gabbro that has large crystals. Okay, then we also have lava hardening outside of the earth and these igneous rocks are known as extrusive. Again, they form outside of the earth or on the earth's exterior. So again, we blackened out the EX in both of the words just so you have something to help you remember. Um, and it forms when molten rock flows out of the earth as lava and it cools rapidly to form fine crystals. So if the cooling of the lava is extremely fast, no crystals will have time to form. And the result is a rock with no minerals and a glassy texture.
Okay, if you need to pause to copy these down, that's fine, go ahead. I'm gonna keep going with our slideshow. Here's a picture of a volcano erupting and that lava will harden and form an igneous rock. Now, how fast or cool that it, um, how fast that it cools will determine um, the size of the crystals. Here's another lava flow. Okay, these are just some really cool pictures of rocks that have formed so fast that they don't have large crystals, they have very, very small crystals. I wanted to get to this slide because this is the glassy texture example known as obsidian. And it really just looks like black glass. We're gonna show it to you in class, but what you'll see is there's absolutely no other crystals involved in it. There are minerals in it too that are not just, it's not just one crystal, uh, mineral, it's a series of many minerals, but it creates this black glassy texture. And that's all because it was formed so quickly and it, the lava hardened so quickly that it, um, it didn't have time to grow other crystals. So it came out as like this one glassy, it looks like glass, really. It's pretty cool. So extrusive igneous rocks may also exhibit what's called a vesicular texture, and these are rounded openings or air pockets, and it's formed from lava solidifying around an escaping gas bubble. So literally when lava gets gas bubbles in it, they form these little holes or pockets of air. I'll show you a picture right here. We have vesicular basalt. Now that is an extrusive igneous rock and we know that because if there's gas pockets and there's holes in it like this little gas pocket that you see the arrow pointing to on your screen, well obviously that would have had to have um, had in contact with the air. So we know it's an extrusive igneous rock. Another piece of um, extrusive igneous rock with gas pockets. This, in, it, this sample is in a great picture, so I'm just going to pass through it, okay? Now we need to get out our reference table. and You have to find the page. It has igneous rock information, okay? So look for it now. Write the number of the page in your notes, okay? What we're going to do is go through this, and we're going to see how we can use the information that we just learned in our notes to apply this to this chart. So what you'll see is that we have a section for extrusive igneous rocks and intrusive igneous rocks. And if you would draw a line just along where this bottom red line is, right along here. This is the line that we use to divide our extrusive rocks from our intrusive rocks, the rocks that we see that grew outside of the earth from the rocks that grew inside the earth. And they purposely designed this reference table so that all of the extrusive rocks are on the upper part of the chart and the igni excuse me, the intrusive rocks are on the bottom part of the chart. And the way we use this is we, we find a rock, whether we determine whether it's extrusive or um, intrusive by looking at our crystal size. So if you look, we see the texture glassy or fine. We just learned that when it's glassy or fine texture, then it had to have grown outside of the earth, right? It had to cool fast so that it didn't have time to grow those large crystals. So when you see a rock that has small, fine, almost no crystals, then you go to the top part of your chart and you narrow down your information based on their sample to determine what type of extrusive igneous rock it is. Of course, if you see the larger crystals in your sample, then you look at the bottom part of your chart and you see they guide you as to what size crystals you may find. Um, if you can measure a crystal size to be one to 10 millimeters in, in diameter, then you would, you would look across this row and it could be considered a granite or a diorite or a gabbro. If it's even larger than 10 millimeters, and you, you literally would take a ruler and measure, then it would have to be pegmatite. So this is how we use the chart. We, we, we look at our sample and we look at our glass, um, our crystal size, and we determine how large or small the crystals are. And that gives us information, whether it's intrusive or extrusive, and that helps us to identify the rock. So in summary, we have intrusive and extrusive rocks. They form either below the surface or at the surface. The rate of cooling is either slow or fast. Large crystals or small crystals, magma, 
or lava. So take a moment and copy that down. Hit pause if you need to. The next classification, the next way that we classify um, igneous rocks is based on its mineral composition. So the density and the color will tell us a lot about the minerals present. We consider felsic or mafic. One, felsic has aluminum in it. That's why next to the picture um, on your reference table, which we'll look, we'll look at in a moment, you'll see AL. That means aluminum. So these igneous rocks are predominantly composed of light colored, low, denser, low density minerals, such as quartz and feldspar. Mafic have iron and magnesium in them, and that's why you see the symbols Fe and Mg next to its name. Now these igneous rocks are composed mainly of dark colored, high density minerals such as olivine and pyroxene. If you go to, back to this reference table page, which again, you write down the name of the page in your notes, you will see at the bottom, we're gonna look at the division between lighter color and darker color and lower density and higher density and mafic or felsic. So they give you the category in the middle. And if it's on this left side, it's lighter with a lower density and felsic material. Whereas if it's on the right hand side of the chart, it's darker, higher dense, higher density and mafic, which is rich in iron and magnesium and iron. We're going to stop here for now. I want you to um, get any notes that you missed by hitting rewind and pausing me and going back and looking and filling in any blank spots that you may have missed, okay? Tomorrow we'll talk more about igneous rocks in class and we'll practice identifying them as well. Thanks and I'll see you next time.